I'll admit it, this all-new S-Class is quite a thing to behold. I mean, these are always flagships, but this new one, it's like it found the table full of technology at the Mercedes building and gorged on all of it. Did they get it right, or did they just get it big? Let's drive this 2014 S550 and check the tech. Now, first off, this new S is bad news for atheists. It's proof there is a God, because they got rid of those crappy-looking faux pontoon fenders that made the last car look like a Mazda 3. Now, spotting a new S-Class is easiest from the front. Big, deep, aggressive grille. Looks really hot, to be honest. And now you've got an LED eyebrow above the headlight as opposed to below on the outgoing car. So easy to pick one out of a crowd. Speaking of those LEDs, Mercedes says this is the first car in production that has no filament light bulbs at all. 56 LEDs make up the headlights, 35 make up the taillights, and 300 are in the cabin. Now this may be the first car we've driven that totally eschews anything but LCD displays. Everything is communicated via these two 12.3 inch 8.3 ratio LCD panels. Now right off the bat, look at that map. That is amazing. This is proof of a maxim in technology that sometimes things get faster enough or bigger enough that they actually hit a limit and they change. Every road is there, every nuance of it, and you really get a sense of where you are and what road's coming up next. No other system really pulls that together like this. The bigger issue is the tech stuff that is in here, and there's a lot of it, is scattered all over the place, particularly when you get to media. Radio has your radio stations, and you have to go through this almost sort of needless screen change to get to them. It's pretty, but it takes time of my eyes off the road. Then for your non-radio sources, you go to media. Now, a lot of car companies segregate other sources under media, but I think for an all-new design like this S-Class, they should think more progressively and start putting all media together in one place. But then when you want to get to your internet media sources, you go to yet a third menu, which of course is your phone and address book, but also the internet stuff which lives under here. And under that sub-menu, you find Mercedes-Benz apps, but there's also internet radio under there. And then there's a www thing, which is a browser but doesn't work when you're driving. A lot of familiar things here. Google local search, POI downloads, weather, traffic cameras is new in this car. You can get a look at where traffic cameras are and look at them for the road ahead. Tune in radio. I don't recall that being in a Benz interface before. Yelp we've seen before. And of course, gas stations and movies. A lot of what's on this interface has to do with the seats. You can adjust the sides of the backrest. You can adjust and position the lumbar. Same thing with the shoulder region. Massage has been in there for a long time, but now instead of just having levels of intensity, they've gone into like types of massage. You have a seat heating balance control, and thank goodness you can reset the whole thing when you get lost. Well, one of the things I've always hated in Mercedes is this little vestigial weird number keypad. Who has this anymore? They finally made it useful by turning it into a touchpad. The problem is it's very vague. The touch isn't well calibrated. And as you can see, I can easily touch two stations or even more at a time. Now, of course, whatever you're listening to comes through a high-end audio system in this car, including a couple of choices of Burmester audio systems, which suffer primarily from the unfortunate coincidence that they look at a glance just like a Budweiser logo. I had three passengers get in here and say, when did Bud get into car audio? And they weren't kidding. It, of course, sounds great. I won't say it's less filling. But it definitely is one of those where I have to wonder, how much money can you put into a car audio system before you no longer hear it, but basically see it? Oh, and check this out. Up here in the glove box is a little bottle of stink water. This thing is a perfume that will get injected into the air conditioning and ventilation system on demand. There's a menu for this as well, the intensity of it. The key to it, Mercedes says, different than those little $4 ones you get in the car wash, is this will not stain your interior. So once you turn it off, it dissipates and goes away. They name all the scents as moods, including one called Freeside Mood that disturbingly sounds like there will be a child conceived in the back seat at some point. In the back of our S550, it's relatively Spartan, believe it or not, because we haven't got all the options, which could include these executive pop-up tables like you have in business class, screens that let you echo the navigation screen, like on an airplane, and of course, all manner of additional massage and heating and cooling. But even though we're kind of slumming it back here, the bear doesn't care, got plenty of room for him. Dual panorama sunroof back here, but I gotta point this out, 
it's actually broken up and smaller than the one we just had on a Jetta wagon. So it's not bad, but it's not the best. Back around these seats and also all around the cabin, you've got this funky club mood lighting back here. This kind of goes with the whole perfume in the glove box theme. Five colors you can select from, different levels of intensity, different levels of absurdity. One day I want to be a Mercedes mechanic, only because they have the most spacious offices. Underneath these hoods that open perpendicular, I love that. Here we find a relatively normal Mercedes story, a twin turbo V8, one turbo on each bank, 4.7 liter displacement, direct injection, sophisticated variable valve timing. The output is 455 horsepower, 516 foot pounds of torque. Great torque because it's a V8 and because it's got turbos on it. Zero to 60 for this 4,300 pound sedan comes up in a very quick 4.8 seconds. One choice on the gearbox, seven speed automatic, a real automatic, not a dual clutch or anything like that. The MPG numbers on this guy are still TBD as of our shoot today, but we're guessing 1830, which will be roughly 20% better on both counts than the outgoing S-Class with a similar engine. That's what Mercedes promises anyway. Now self-parking is something new in cars these days, but self-parking something this big in a space we've set up this tight, this should be fun. All right, the little blue icon tells me it's looking for parking. I'm looking for a white diamond alongside it that says it's found a space big enough to put this thing in. There it is. Put it in reverse. OK, self-parking. And here we go. This is where you really appreciate active parking, not with a small car, but with a big car that you're pretty sure you couldn't park yourself, at least not two times in a row. Boy, we are really close to that bumper. Okay, time to cut in. Let's see how it does. Oh, that looks close. Oh, that looks close. Coming back. I don't hear any curb rash. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to. Select drive. Look at that. Hard right. Nibbling. Nibbling. Going to the front here. Select reverse. And let's mop up and finish. Very nice. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is come to a stop. Why start with a stop? Because I want to see how this auto start stop technology has been refined. Engine shuts down. I did not detect that. If I wasn't watching the tack, I wouldn't have known it. And the restart almost as imperceptible. Quick and barely shaking the car. Finally, someone's getting start stop done in a way that befits a car of this refinement. Now these cars can be equipped so that they will actually self-drive up to the mid 30 mile per hour range. Like in traffic, they'll follow the car in front, they'll handle acceleration, braking, and steering. I'll be honest, I never really got it to work in my driving with the car. Ditto goes for the lane departure tech. That was on and off as well. But my colleague Wayne Cunningham says it worked out pretty well for him. Combine that with the fact this is a pre-production car and I'm gonna withhold judgment on both those technologies till later. This car does two things really well. First of all, it showcases an awful lot of technology, most of which is not silly gimmickry. It's a good state-of-the-art showcase. Secondly, it also takes the S-Class brand and I think makes it much more progressive. This doesn't feel like such an old goat's car anymore, from the interior design to the exterior design to the fact that it has a lot of really interesting technology that's pretty much all well done. 